Okay, this tape is on basically the design, not design, it's the design is already there. A super jet fighter. Super jet fighter. Now, super jet fighter is a cool fighter, it can go out in space and stuff, but uh, the thing is you got to use conventional um, jet propulsion to kind of get it up to a certain point, then you probably use scramjet to get it part way out in the space, but after that, what do you use out in the space because, like, there's no, like, oxygen out in the space, you know? So it's like, here we go. Super jet fighter. Picks up where the turbojet and the scramjet leave off, and something that is vastly more powerful is, well, you're already familiar with it, with places like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we use the atom bomb. Well, if you were to, during the enrichment process, Go ahead and make a quick jet here. And it's got wings. You know, this is not a very good rendering of a jet fighter. But the idea is back here, you know, and in here is where the, the jet shoots out the, the ignited fuel so that it can go forward. So this dude can go forward. So, dude, like what's happening is they create like an explosion within the jet, you know? And it like goes that way, and the jet like goes that way. So they're like, whoo. Okay, so anyway, we got this cool little thing here where the dude's in there uh, flying the jet. It's nothing more than a big uh, engine with wings. <coughs> Here's a thing for a uh, idea that will take this to the next level is to slow down the explosion, which is basically what we're doing here with the turbojet. Um, and the scram just just to take off of uh, developing a, a higher rate of speed using the concepts from the turbojet anyway. But you explode stuff in here, and but it's not just one explosion like you would be in a, in a combustion engine. Uh, there's a, a continual introducing of fuel into this chamber. I should actually make this. I was trying to show it like it was within the vehicle, but it looks like the, there's parts missing or something. It's actually close off. And the air comes in here. These guys have this thing that sucks the air in. And, you know, and then of course, then because this has got like a fan on it, it's blowing the air through so that when you ignite the fuel, it blows out the back end, creating propulsion forward. So anyway, when you're introducing the, the fuel, it's a continual stream of fuel. It's not like several combustions one after the other. So that's the type of effect we're looking for using nuclear materials. And yes, it is nuclear, not nuclear. For those of us who are actually educated and say it correctly, it is nuclear. Okay. So, during the enrichment process, introduce an element into the uh, radioactive materials that are going to be combusted. Now, if you combust all those at once, that's called like uh, an atom bomb. That's an atom. That's a bomb. And you could do the same thing. You could as we saw, unfortunately, from a certain events recently, if you were to ignite all this fuel at once, like, say, running this into the ground, it, it, you notice that jets explode, because all the fuel is combusted, boom, all at once. What this does is slow down the use of fuel, and that's the idea we want to do with the nuclear materials that would be used in a bomb, instead of uh, using all the nuclear materials at once, and boom, letting the reaction take place in every single bit of the fuel, we'll call the nuclear materials fuel, then if we think of it as in terms of fuel, nuclear, I should put material, because we're not sure exactly what the government is using, right, for those bombs, I mean, if that was common knowledge, then everybody would have the bomb, right, so anyway, nuclear materials, during the enrichment process, you add an element to it that will slow down the reaction, and you can introduce that uh, much the same way you would introduce jet fuel into this chamber, create the explosion, basically, and it's a steady stream of fuel being introduced and ignited, just like a turbojet fighter or, and, of course, the scramjet to take off of that. This has a potential because nuclear materials uh, give a much greater force of explosion. They're going to have a greater effect, okay? It would probably take a lot less of uh, nuclear materials than it does uh, jet fighter fuel to create the same amount of propulsion, even, when, even given the scramjet. 
So then also the nuclear materials don't require oxygen. It's just based on nuclear reactions. You can you the bombs just boom. They're just all the atoms are just hitting each other and dividing and boom, exploding. Well, you don't need oxygen for that. So this can go out into space. This vehicle could go out into space, whereas a turbojet, uh, even a turbojet scramjet hybrid could not. So we could feasibly from the ground, using turbojet, maybe even scramjet technology, taking this vehicle up into uh, the not outer portion of outer space, but up above where you start losing uh, the gravitational pull of the Earth, get up high enough where, where the oxygen is not working anymore, and then you turn to uh, super jet fighter mode. I don't know what they're going to call it. Personally, I never, I don't never know who would have thought to call it a scramjet, but they have acronyms for these things, you know, turbojet, scramjet. Who knows where they come up with this stuff? <sighs> of course, a lot of people know because they hear it all the time. And anyway, you get the idea. Using control, basically a controlled, steady nuclear explosion. Explosion that's continuous. It's like a burning fuel. You thinking of this nuclear materials as fuel and burning it at a steady rate slowing down the nuclear reaction because if you just put even just a little bit of, of nuclear materials in here and just explode it, the whole vehicle would probably just go boom and we lose the pilot and everybody's crying and, and that's not going to work. Okay, don't do that. We don't want to lose people. We already know how it works. We just need to substitute this for the fuel that's already being used. Now, you might need to strengthen the part in here where it explodes because we don't want the vehicle to explode. And that's where your scientists, your experts, you know, and with all the mathematical models and everything, to know how powerful this is. Scale this down, the nuclear material, just enough, maybe it's just a few molecules, who knows, it'll explode together to create that reaction. Maybe it's just very little, maybe they grind the radioactive material, like the, you've seen those rods of, of uranium or whatever, maybe you just grind those down into powder or something somehow or other, and then you slowly then introduce, introduce it. Maybe it's in a... Uh, some time, electro, uh, some type of electrolytic fluid. Who knows? They will suspend it in electrolytic fluid and, and introduce it that way. So it's almost like a fuel-like consistency. So you got. So anyway, that's possible ideas. And uh, of course, nuclear explosions are like a hundred times, who knows, or more powerful than just jet fuel being burned. So imagine out in space going ten times faster than even a scramjet, which right now is clocked at Mach 10. So this is for space travel. This is, you know, can work on the Earth. Of course, the thing you want to do is uh, you really don't want to use this, this much of space. Scramjet's fine for on Earth. We don't need to go any faster than Mach 10 on the Earth because what you'll have coming out here, considerations, is radioactive material. Okay, well, if we're using nuclear materials, what's going to come out the back end of this jet is going to be radioactive. So you don't want to use this until you get out in space anyway unless you want to radiate the Earth. Okay, so, until we can find some way to uh, remedy the fact that there's, you know, much like the nuclear fallout from uh, nuclear bombs, the radioactive leftovers, until we can remedy that somehow or other, or come up with some way to really clean that up easily and effectively, and dispose of the nuclear waste, we're just going to have to do it out in space. But this would make uh, space travel possible, by the way. It doesn't have to be a jet fighter but this can cross over into transport vehicles for space travel.